Welcome to Coding Adventures. Last time we learned about shapes and colors and we implemented together this car. We made the, this drawing with code. Today we are continuing the lesson about uh, colors and we are talking about RGB colors. So let's get started. Alright, so this is a mini lesson about colors. It's in the continuation of the previous lesson where we discuss about color, about named colors. And today we are discussing about how the computer creates shades of various colors using some very simple primary colors. And I did a small uh, <laughs> recording for you today. Uh, I actually took a magnifying glass and looked at the monitor, uh, at my monitor. and. I, I magnify it a lot there. I wanted to see if I can spot the pixels. And I saw more than just pixels. I saw what makes pixels. So let me play for you a short video so you can also see what I saw on my monitor. As you can see here, we don't see only individual pixels. You can see text. This is on the CodeGuppy website that we are using here in the, se uh, in, in the series. This is the logo, but you can see that these pixels are actually made out of even smaller pixels to call those, out of smaller elements. And actually for each pixel, if you pay closer attention, there are three smaller elements. And actually here it's hard to see, but most uh, here are basically blue and green. But if we switch to a full color image, you'll see that actually inside there are three colors, a red, a green, and a blue. So these are the three primary colors that computers are using to generate a variety of shades. And by all means, this is the, not the only way in which we can generate shades out of primary colors. You probably learned in schools, uh, in the painting class about different methods you combined uh, red with yellow to produce other color and so so forth computers are using mostly the rgb model printers they use a different model but in today's lesson we're going to focus on the rgb model used mostly by display screens and because it's so popular and it's, uh, screens are around us in the computer languages like javascript there are ways to specify colors in rgb mode so before we actually uh, start and uh, switch on the computer let's take the notebook and let's discuss a little bit what we saw on the screen in the previous uh, small segment. So we looked at the canvas basically. And as we discussed, we placed on this canvas a magnifier glass. Let's actually make this magnifier glass here. You know, it was a big magnifier glass because <laughs> actually we were able to see pretty tiny pixels. Okay, so this is my magnifier glass. And you can do this experiment at home as well. So take a powerful magnifier glass and get closer to your screen. And what we saw inside this magnifier glass, we start noticing the pixels. And the pixels are like some squares, uh, some rec actually squares. <laughs> they are perfectly square. <laughs> In the fortunate cases, they are square. Um, so these are the pixels that make up any image, the ones that we can control and basically turn on and off. And if you remember when we discuss about an instruction uh, about the pixel, how to set a pixel, we basically, this that instruction was setting this particular pixel on and off. But actually, if we look even closer, as we saw in this small um, clip that I played for you before, each pixel is actually made up of, of three components, three small LEDs in most cases, some electronic components a red, a green, oops, that's red as well, <laughs> a red, a green, and a blue. And this is repeated for all the other pixels on the canvas here. So perhaps we should uh, just take that particular pixel, one single pixel on the side. So we have a narrow band of uh, blue. Let's put the, <laughs> I'm drawing it in reverse order. So let's place here some green and some red. I drew it in inverse order, but we have RGB here. 
and actually doesn't matter in the work there. Okay, so this is a single pixel, so one pixel. And this side, they are RGB LEDs. And now, since the entire screen is made out of these tiny, tiny LEDs, that you can actually programmatically control them. And as you'll see in a second, we can take each indiv individual color and programmatically we can make it more intense or less intense. And basically for these colors, we can practically encode means we can apply a number from zero to 255. And we can do this for red. We can do the same for green. And we can do the same for blue. All right. So you may wonder why zero to 255? Well, we learn later about this one, but basically um, between zero and 255, there are 256 values. And all these values are, we, we can cram together in a single byte of memory. So basically if we draw, return here to the drawing board, this is one byte in memory in general. And one byte for this one, and one byte for the other one. And we'll jump a little bit ahead of us now. And you know, one byte has eight bit. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna talk about bits and bytes and numbers in a further lesson in a future. But for now, just, uh, just bear with me. So there are eight bit of color, eight, eight bits per each of these uh, numbers. So in total, there are 24 bit. So if you heard before 24 bit image colors, it's, it's basically coming from this uh, particular aspect. All right. So now we know that inside each pixel, there are these three LED uh, RGB LEDs that we can control through software by sending them a value between zero and 255. Okay. So let's now switch on the computer here. And um, actually, before we jump into the code, let's go in the paint in paint a little bit. And you probably are familiar with this uh, program. Uh, it's you know it's on each and every computer running Windows out there. And you know you can do drawings with it. You can select a color from the palette. But sometimes, if you need more than these colors, what you can do you can click Edit Colors, and you are presented with this window where you can basically customize the color. You can choose whatever color you want. And notice here, we can specify a color by specifying the three components, RGB, red, green, and blue. And like I mentioned, this goes up to 255. We cannot go higher than this. I tried to put a bigger number and uh, basically the computer corrected it to 255. And you can play here with these ones. So for instance, these numbers have a certain particularity. If all these three numbers are zero, we get a, a black color. If all these three numbers are maximum 255, we get white. And if they are equal, but with a value in between, perhaps let's say here, I don't know, 100, we get a shade of gray. And Basically, you can create many, many shades in this way. All right, and right now I'm playing with the mouse and I'm selecting various colors. But this is a coding course, it's not about teaching paint. So let's close paint and jump really quickly in our code editor. And here we can start a new program, basically. And in this program, we learned last time that the command to, uh, to uh, the command that allows us to select the fill color for a shape is fill. So, and we let's quickly rem rem remember how we use fill. So we use it with the name color last time. Something like that. And if we are running this one, we should see a red circle. But what about if we want not to create colors from named colors? So named colors are pretty limited. Um, you know, it's a list of uh, perhaps less than 100 colors, these ones, or 100 and around 100 colors. But with by varying um, the RGB components of each of these colors, we can create many, many other colors, millions of colors, basically. So the way we do that is by specifying 
the RGB in some sense, but not in this way. There is a certain format here. We have to specify it in this format. R, G, B. Um, R um, it should be represented in hexadecimal, G as well, green as well, and, uh, and then blue as well in hexadecimal. And this is for another time when we're going to discuss numbers, but for now, the easiest way for you to convert from uh, decimal to hexadecimal is to basically use a calculator. So let me quickly uh, open a calculator here and you'll see what I mean. We're going to switch to the programmer mode and let's calculate some Let's put, let's type in some numbers. So number zero, it's already zero, right? So if I type 255, 255 in hexadecimal is FF, right? So any other number that I'm typing here, I'm typing in decimal is displayed in hexadecimal. So for now, we are not concerned with um, how to convert from decimal to hexadecimal, that it's a, for a more advanced topic. For now, we should just know that we have a tool that allows us to convert from uh, one base to the other. So let's try to play with some colors, okay? So instead of red, green, blue, let's choose first the FF, 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 which is basically, as we saw, is 255. So we expect this one to give us white, right? And the format, play, pay close under attention to the format. So basically we specify the RGB color uh, inside the string, the string starts with a, a pound sign, and then we specify the R, the G, and the B color in hexadecimal. And the casing here doesn't matter. So let's run it. All right, it's white inside, it's hard to see. But let's put here zero, zero, zero. Now we have a black circle. And let's see what happens if we place for the first color for red. FF, which is the maximum of intensity for red, and then we leave the green and blue to zero. If we run this one, we see a red color here. And we can play with the intensity. So the numbers here in hexadecimal, uh, in decimal they start from zero to 255, in hexadecimal is from zero to FF. So let's play some numbers in between, maybe a 10 for red. 10 is very close to zero, so that's why it appears like a dark gray, almost close to black. Let's try an AA, which is some, somewhere in, the, in between. So it's this kind of uh, red. But again, we have a tool. Let's say we want to create colors in paint. Why we have to play with these numbers and don't know what we get? Let's do something visual. Let's go in paint. Let's pick a nice color. Perhaps we want Let's pick um, hmm, this color. Okay, this color over here. So we see the values RGB here. These are in uh, decimal and we can convert them with the calculator in hexadecimal and input them in our code. All right, so let's get started. Um, let me move this uh, window out of the way. Let me start it again here. Oops, I lost the color. Okay, I found it, this one. Now, in some versions of Windows, what is very interesting that the paint itself gives you this color in hexadecimal. So it's just a simple copy and paste. But in the current version that I have here, it's an uh, older Windows 10, um, the colors are just displayed just in RGB. So we, can com we need to convert them into hexadecimal and then we're gonna pass them into the code. So let's take our calculator and let's convert them. The first one, 237 here, 237. In hexadecimal, it's ED. So we're gonna just type here ED. The second one, it's 112. In hexadecimal, it's 70. So we're gonna type here 70. And the third one is 215. In hexadecimal, is D7. So we're gonna put here D7. All right, so let's run it. And notice we have the same shade of color as this one that we define in paint. And I want also to mention that although this is JavaScript, this format of representing RGB colors is common to HTML. So basically, if we'll, have, if we'll switch later on to HTML, this kind of techniques, it comes pretty handy. 
All right, so now let's play a little bit more with the colors. And perhaps we should, um, like we did before, let's create some rectangles other than circles. Let's create a rectangle that starts from 0, 0, it's 800 and perhaps 100. And the first one, let's, uh, let's use a red color. Let's create another rectangle. For this one, we're gonna use green color. And the third one, we're gonna use a blue color. And the this one should start at zero, zero. So if this one ends at 100, let's leave 100 gaps. So this one should start at 300 perhaps. And this one should start at 500. We should see that three bands of colors are green, uh, red, green, and blue. Why this is starting at 300, at 500? Yep. All right. All right. So uh, basically, uh, this is a simple way to specify colors. And it's, it's pretty difficult for humans to actually play with these numbers. But the way we uh, use the colors in this way, we use a graphical program that allows us to pick the colors. And then we come back here and, uh, and we type in the color. And today will be a short lesson. I just wanted to create this addendum to the previous lesson that we had yesterday about colors. But before we, I let you go, let me switch here in codegraphy.com. Let me save this program, colors. And as, uh, as we do always, I'm gonna place this one in the chat, just in case you want to review the code later. And let me, sw let me go here on the CodeGuppy website uh, and I spotted a program, a pretty interesting program under the math category. It's called, hmm, I have some should zoom out a little bit. binary decimal and hexadecimals explorer. So let's try this program. And again, we don't analyze the code for now, but instead we're gonna run it and notice the effect. So when I was mentioning about the hexadecimal numbers and decimal numbers, uh, I said that we're gonna talk about them later in a future episode. But before then, if you want to learn more about these numbers, if you want to play with them, you can also use these programs. So I'm gonna scroll through the numbers and notice here is the decimal uh, representation of a number, number three, and below is the hexadecimal representation. Here is uh, written with a prefix of zero, but it's three. And notice what's happening when I'm gonna reach here nine on the decimal. Because in, hex because in decimal we have just 10 symbols, um, this one will switch to zero and we'll get a one in front of it. But in hexadecimal, we have 16 symbols and the symbols after nine, they are basically uh, represented as A, B, C, D, E, F. So they continue till we reach F. And if I'll advance one more time, in decimal at this point, we have 15, but if I'll advance one more time, in hexadecimal, we notice the same uh, pattern as in decimal, the last digit becomes the unit digit becomes zero, and then the tenth unit here, or in hexadecimal, uh, the other digit becomes one. And we can just use this program and advance the numbers uh, till uh, FF or 255. All right, so this is a short lesson. I wanted just to also uh, touch a little bit on how to define colors in RGB. I hope that you like it. And I just want to say that tomorrow we start the real elements of JavaScript. We are starting with variables and then we are continuing with uh, repetition structures. And then we are advancing slowly towards, uh, slowly but surely towards animations and games. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good night and uh, Happy coding.